Sparks, Dr. Sparks. It's time, we're live. You need to start the show. <laughs> oh, hello everyone and welcome. I am Dr. Sparks. This is the Martian Explorations. I am joined today by the students of Pittsburgh's Environmental Charter School today. Let's go ahead and get right to it. I know a place that's really cool. It's up higher than any school. Grab a jet pack and some fuel. Cause we're going up high, high in the sky. Come on up for a ride. With your good friends at your side. Imagination is your guide. Cause it's Dr. Sparks. Science story typewriting time. Hello everyone and welcome once again to the Martian Explorations. What this is, is an adventure set on the red planet where three intrepid heroes need to solve a mystery and make the planet, the red planet, a better place. Today we have three heroes. We have Martian Mole, Martian Squirrel, and Martian Mouse. Or, as they prefer to go by on Earth, we've got Clayton, we've got Joshua, and we've got Oslin. And they're also joined by some of their siblings as well who will uh, be the peanut gallery and help provide color commentary on what's happening in today's episode. Now, let's get right to our scenario. Our three adventurers are gathered on the... Will you help him? Yes. 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 You guys are calm. would you ask a Papa Sparrow here? You're going to need to ask him some questions to kind of figure out what he knows about where Baby Sparrow has gone or maybe where, where she was last. Where, where did you last see her? What does she look like? What does she look like? <laughs> um, did you check in the birdhouse? Yes, and one more thing, can she fly? Yeah. Okay. Do you know where the birdhouse is? And if you do, can you tell us where it is? The birdhouse. <laughs> uh. Somebody is saying on Restream that they cannot hear the puppet's responses. Is that a thing? Oh, the puppet's responses. Oh, yes, that's true. Okay, so um, you guys to begin to head in the direction of the birdhouse. Now, for the people who are watching at home, they may not know your characters as well as you know them. So I was wondering, could you guys introduce your characters? Martian Mole, would you tell us who you are and a little bit about your strengths and abilities? And same for Martian Squirrel and Martian Mouse. Martian Mole, do you want to start us off? So I, Martian Mole, I have sharp claws and um, I'm like part of Gryffindor kind of. And um, I'm very like thoughtful and I have a bunch of like machines that do my work for me and very clever and yeah. Yeah, perfect, excellent. Martian Mole, clever as a whistle. Uh, 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 clever as a clever whistle, how about that? <laughs> uh, and also sharp claws, strong animal. Martian, Martian squirrel, you want to tell us about you? 
Um, me or a Martian squirrel? Martian squirrel. He does not like um people fighting. He he's like a peacemaker. Um, but he he has a very long tail that's like you can eat, like a monkey tail you can use to like as an extra limb. Kind of helpful. Exactly. Peacemaker, strong, long tail that's prehensile, uh, and you're always trying to make sure that people are getting along. Excellent. And Martian Mouse, what are you like? Strong, brave, and fast. So fast. Fastest animal on the red planet. Zipping around like nobody's business. All right. Now, the three of you wander across the plane in the direction that Papa Sparrow pointed you in, and you come across the birdhouse. Now, it looks like... Uh, uh, like a trailer house on top of a pole. <laughs> and so let me tell you, this pole is about 30 feet in the air. It's made out of aluminum and it's very smooth. You're going to need to find a way to get to the top of the birdhouse that's on top of this pole. And you've got some supplies here on the ground before it. It looks like Baby Sparrow just finished some renovations and she's left some rope and some boards lying around. You're going to need to find a way to get up to the top. What do you guys think? Anybody have any ideas? I have an idea. Martian Mole, tell us. What's your idea? So we can put the wood together and um, tie the wood together with the rope and make like a ladder, a like ladder. a rope and wood ladder kind and of. I think that's an excellent idea. The only problem with that is how would you get the rope ladder up to the top? How would you secure it to the top? Um, throw it. You're going to try to throw um, the rope ladder up to the top, you think? Yep. What if, what if you knock the trailer over? Knock the trailer over? <laughs> it's kind of tiny. Well, uh, it is tiny and it does maybe look pretty big. It's in there, so I mean, <laughs> so I really the baby bird could be in there. The baby sparrow I mean, could be in there. Do you think, I mean, generally, if you're looking for a missing, per missing person, the goal is not to uh, potentially kill them by knocking over the building that they're inside of. <laughs> Uh, but this is your adventure. If you want to try to knock over the house, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> uh, Martian, um, Martian Squirrel, what do you think? Um, I know that we probably should do a um, rope ladder, but that's too easy, so I don't want to do it. Okay, fair um, enough. Martian Mole to dig a mound of dirt and then put the um, dirt that was in the hole like as a pile. Then he should stand on the dirt then I should stand on him, and then Mouse should stand on me, and then he can, Mouse can, because he's really fast, and like, um, Ray, he can like, jump into the trailer. This is a brilliant idea, I think. I think, okay, so let me recap um, for people that may not have heard what you were saying there. So what we're going to have happen here is Martian Mole is going to be the star of the show here. He's going to dig a hole and get the loose dirt from that and make a pile. And then the three of you are going to make a human tower and you're gonna stand on each other's shoulders on top of this pile of dirt. And from there, you should be able to reach the lower lip of the birdhouse. Is that the plan? Yeah. Okay, Martian Mouse, Martian Mole, are you guys on board or do you wanna try the conventional rope ladder approach? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I say Joshua's I idea. Say, I say yeah. Squirrel's idea. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Martian Mole, uh, will you describe for me how you're gonna, what you're gonna do here? I'm gonna like, I'm just gonna go like a dog, kind of, and I'm just gonna <laughs> all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, use your arms. Show us, show us, show us. You're digging, you're digging, you're like, huge claws. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and now the uh, the rest of you. So while that's happening, Martian Mouse and Martian Squirrel, are you guys just like having a glass of lemonade, or are you doing any prep work to like, uh, what's what's next? You gonna practice human pyramiding? What do you think, Martian Squirrel? Exercise my tail, so after the mouse, Martian Mouse get up, I might be able to get up with my tail. Cool. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you could probably, like, use your tail almost like a rope, and, like, Martian Mouse could pull you up or something like that. Uh, that's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, you do this. So, Martian Mole has built this pile of dirt. Oh, look at this! <laughs> okay. Great job, Martian Mole. Look at that! <laughs> Okay, uh, so who's on the bottom of the tower here to get up to the top? Mouse. Mouse is on the bottom. <laughs> the littlest guy, he's very brave and kind of full hearted. That makes perfect squirrel sense, but plays the type. Yeah, squirrel should be on the bottom and then mole and, and then, then mouse. mouse. It's too late, Mars is, mouse is already there. <laughs> All right, so it goes mouse 
and then squirrel, and then mole. And Mouse is feeling very brave, and also like maybe he shouldn't have agreed to be on the bottom of the tower. <laughs> So he's straining, and beads of sweat are pouring off of his forehead. He's very fast, but he's not really super strong. And you can see these beads of sweat, they're shooting off his forehead like bullets everywhere. And on top of his shoulders is Martian Squirrel, and Martian Squirrel's starting to sweat herself because she's lo or himself because he's looking down at Martian Mouse, who is like slowly uh, swaying all around. And look, if they fall, it's pretty far to the ground. They could really hurt themselves. But then Martian Mole scrambles to the top of Martian Squirrel, and he leaps and his claws just barely catch the lip of the edge of the birdhouse. And it looks like they're gonna slip and they do slip a little bit, but he holds on. He holds on to the ledge and he pulls himself up. Ugh. And he lifts himself over the edge and he sits on the edge and he pulls up his friend and Martian Squirrel's being hauled up by his tail and he pulls him up and then next, Martian Mouse is kinda just down there. So Martian Mole grabs onto Martian Squirrel's feet and lowers him down and Martian Mole, and this is the best part, he uses the ramp, he uses the mound like a ramp and he gets a running start and he sprints and he springs up through the air and he grabs a hold of Martian Squirrel's long tail with just the, a little bit of his tail. No, they, 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 they link tails together in like a quick little, uh, you know, utilitarian knot uh, and together they like fling themselves over the edge and they collapse in a heap on top of the nest. And you've done it. You've made it to the top of the birdhouse. Congratulations. So now, you're inside the birdhouse. And let me ask you, what kind of clues are you going to be looking for inside of this birdhouse? Oh, what might tell you where the bird has gone? Raccoon hair. Raccoon hair. Raccoon hair. Oh, you are. So we talked about Martian raccoon is the nemesis in this world. He's an arch villain. So you'll look for evidence that he has a hand in the disappearance of Baby Sparrow? Martian, Martian Squirrel, what do you think? I think we should be looking for feathers or something that could be left behind by a bird. Excellent. Look for feathers that were left behind by a bird. An excellent idea. Um, Martian there, Mouse, any like ideas what you would want to look for? Over? What's that? If, anything, if anything's knocked over, like... Look for signs like... of a struggle. So it sounds like you guys are pretty keen that there's been a kidnapping here. That baby sparrow has been taken somewhere against her will. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at the inside of baby sparrow's house. Now you can see there's a couple interesting things happening here. There's a uh, the door that you guys came in. There's two windows pointing outside. There's a cannon, weirdly. Uh, there's a nice little painting, a desk, and a switch. I don't know if you can read what that says on the disc uh, on the on the switch. Can you guys read what that says? No, I don't even. Oh, there. Right behind the squirrel there. The top says disco it says and the bottom no says disco no disco. No disco and disco. Yes. Oh, yeah, it says disco and no disco. Yep, the switch is right now pointed at no disco. What would you guys like to do first? What would you like to do to investigate this house? Switch disco! <laughs> All right, you reach over and you flick the disco switch. <laughs> Amazing! Uh, uh, it, it does nothing to propel our story forwards, but that was incredible. Great disco. Uh, it's now switched back to no disco. Uh, Martian Squirrel, what do you think? I think that we should um, tell Mouse, Martian Mouse, to get in the cannon and we should shoot him. Uh, you want to shoot Martian Mouse out of the cannon? Okay, Martian Mouse, how do you feel about that? Offended. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know that that's going to work, Martian Squirrel. <laughs> I, I have an idea. Oh. Okay. Martian Mole, give us. Um, so it, we could see if there's anything in the drawers and the table that Martian Mouse is on. An excellent idea. Okay. So you walk over to the desk drawer, and it turns out that the top desk drawer is unlocked. So you go ahead and uh, open it up. And... You pull oh. open the drawer, and there's a couple different things in this desk drawer here. So you can read, see there's, there's, a, there's a... Read the note. Oh, there's a note here. Yes, there is. Let's see. Okay. It says... Uh, well, can somebody read it for me? 
Um, don't tell anyone about the safe behind the pig painting. Oh, well, uh, that might be important. I, I don't know. <laughs> they just told now, us. Look behind the safe in the big painting. Okay. There is a big uh, big so you... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it now. said pig. Okay, so you, you close the drawer, and you go ahead and you go over to the, uh, the pig painting. And uh, it's a beautiful painting, really. Whoever made it was uh, very, very talented. Um, it wasn't me. I, I can't draw this good. <laughs> um, so you, you take the painting away, and once you know it, that behind it is a safe. <gasps> go to the clock. Go, no, go back to Easy. The easy. Okay, so uh, what, what should I should I set some of these numbers here, or like play with uh, the dial yeah. seems to be locked. Um, I don't know. So ten, ten minus five is five. All right, so I'll set that to five. Oh dear. <laughs> five. Okay. There's the satisfying okay. clink. Okay. Um. Fifty-nine minus. Josh, uh, Martian squirrel. Minus 57 is two. Two, okay. I will set the middle number to two. Another satisfying clink. Martian Mouse, you got the last one? Oops. 42. 42, excellent. 42, another satisfying clink. And this time, the dial is able to spin. And so you turn it, and it opens up. And now, when you open up the lock, Inside, you find a journal. This journal belongs to Baby Sparrow. You guys gonna read the read journal? Read the journal. We need to read the journal. Well, so I gotta ask you: Is it is it ethical to read somebody's journal? No. Yes. Yes. No. We need yes. to. Read yes. I mean, I mean it's, it's life or read the journal, like. I'm 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 with you. I mean, it's it's a gray area. Losing it. What's yeah. that? It's a gray area though, right? It's tricky. So you, you, you agree to open up the journal, um, but I think, I, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think maybe if you promise amongst yourselves that you're never going to tell anybody what you read in the journal, that that yeah. might yeah, you know, I guess. make you feel a little better. Mom, I be, you might need to tell someone at some point. Can you say that again, Martian Squirrel? Don't promise that we won't tell anybody because we might need to like give away some clues to the grown-up sparrow or... That's true. Martian Squirrel doesn't think that you should make that promise because at some point that the knowledge that you get from reading this journal may be Mole super material. Mole agrees. Mole agrees. Yes. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> you open up the journal and inside it is filled with the very first entry reads Gosh, I like this journal. I like this journal almost as much as I like worms. Gosh, do I like worms. I like worms that are big. I like worms that are small. My favorite band is the worms. This goes on for 172 pages where the baby sparrow does nothing but talk about worms the entire time. Worms, worms, worms. Oh, I could write limericks about worms. Once there was a worm that lived in the south and I went and put it into my mouth. I chewed really hard and then I, um, I actually didn't write this limerick, and I just got stuck. I chewed really hard uh, and listened to uh, a bard, <laughs> and I forget the beginning, so that's the end of my limerick. <laughs> Anyways, the very last entry in Baby Sparrow's journal says, I have gotten to look for worms in the deep, dark cave at the far edge of the Acidilia Plain. I hope that it goes well. I know a lot of people have gone there and never come back, but I'm not going to be one of them. I'm going to have a great time. And that's the end. The, the journal it finishes there. That's the last page. It's blank after that. That means she went where it says she went. Yeah, so we need to go there. To the Somehow cave. we need to find a way out of the treehouse thing. Wait, yeah, I wonder. Is there an easy way to get out of the treehouse? I wonder. No. no. Jump. jump. Just jump. No, we, no we, what we should have done was brought the boards and the rope, rope there up. up so we could like tie it then together and then drop it down and climb down. Hmm. Interesting. Um, okay. Use the cannon. Use the cannon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cannon! You guys want to try it? <laughs> yeah. No, okay. No, first, wait. First, first, um, 
first, can we go back to the drawer and take the battery and the compass that sure. were in there? Yeah, we yeah. should take those things. You take the battery and the compass from the drawer. Wait, what else is in there again? Uh, there is a, uh, a pen that has a broken tip. Um, a pen that has wow. a broken tip, uh, a screwdriver that is comically small, um, and uh, I think that's supposed to be a, a, a bubble or a coin. <laughs> okay, I'll take you everything. Take everything. Take everything. All right, <laughs> you took it all. <laughs> Empty drawer. Poor baby sparrow. She's gonna come back. And <laughs> now her house has been ransacked. You were looking for evidence of ransacking before. <laughs> okay, uh, it's fortunate you took the battery though, because the cannon requires a nine volt battery. So you attach it, and so. Uh, Tell me about how you're going to work this cannon. There's a button on the back that launches the cannon, right? Uh, Does anybody have a lighter? Uh, so it actually is electric. It, it works off the 9-volt battery. Okay. So somebody's just got to press the button. Martian Squirrel, you got an idea? Um, can I see the cannon again? You're going to start the cannon with your tail? Can I see the cannon again? Uh, no. Oh, yes, you can, actually. You can see the cannon. OK. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I think we should. I'm gonna, I'm gonna point it in the right direction so I don't go flying into space forever. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, gravity's weaker on Mars, and so you probably could shoot yourself out of a cannon into orbit, and you gotta be careful because you don't <laughs> want that to have happen. Why okay, are we so, all getting at the same time? What's and that? Then, why does it, why are we getting at the same time? Well, and then some, and then, um, Squirrel uses, um, he or her tail. And then presses the button, and then. Martian Mouse, that is perfectly in keeping with your character. It's very brave. But it's also a great idea. That's exactly what you do. <laughs> All right, the three of you clamber in. Martian Squirrel is last because his tail's got to snake out and press the button. Um, and uh, with a, like, you know. <laughs> What I like about this is you have no idea what's going to happen when you fire the cannon. None at all. But whatever happens, you'll all go through it together because this is friendship. If you can't, if friendship isn't climbing into a cannon and getting launched out together at the same time, then I don't know what it is. <laughs> so you scramble into the cannon one by one. Martian Mouse goes in first. He's kind of like the tampening down, you know. And then I climbs the Martian uh, Mole and he goes in butt first, Ugh, you know. And then last of all is Martian Squirrel, and he's kind of tucking up like this with his tail sticking out of the top. And he reaches around with his tail, and he, he, he presses the button. And there is a boom! <laughs> a spray of confetti fills the air. The house looks even more ransacked than before. And the three of you soar through the air. You soar! It is immensely freeing. You can feel the wind through your hair. You can see the ground below you rising up. Oh, wait. You can see the ground below you rising up. <laughs> How are you going to land? What happens now, guys? <laughs> oh. Martian Squirrel, you got an idea? Say that one more time. I'm using my tail as a parachute. He's going to use his tail as a parachute. Uh, OK. <laughs> It's the only idea you got. You got no more time. Martian Squirrel sticks his tail out, and you slow somewhat. Thankfully, you land in a very soft patch of sand. <laughs> and it turns out you are right before the entrance to the deep, dark cave. Standing before you now is a huge boulder that is blocking the way uh, into the cave. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this cave has a reputation. It's known as a place where people have to struggle to get into the cave. <laughs> struggle. <laughs> I mean, isn't that obvious? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so you, you reach the front of the cave, and looking at it, you can see that there is this boulder right here. And the boulder says, oh, hello, you three must be adventurers, are you now? Ha <laughs> ha. Do you talk to the kid? Do you talk to the rock? Or is that right? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Martian yes. Squirrel refuses, but Martian Mole does. Oh, hello. Uh, have you come looking for Baby Sparrow? Is that what has happened here today? Yes. Well, that is fortunate because she's disappeared, but I can't let you into the cave. You see, Baby Sparrow may be injured inside there, and I don't want you to get hurt as well. For me to let you into this cave, you'd have to prove that you are very smart indeed, and I don't know that you can do that. Why don't you just move it? I know what we have to do. We have to find a way to take the sword out of the rocks. Uh, that is, 
Uh, that is a great idea. Um, but it also might be a different story. I don't think there's actually a sword in this rock. That is actually the puppetry pull that's used to manipulate the rock, not, the, not, not a sword. But that's a great idea. No, if you want to enter this cave, you must answer four riddles for me. And I warn you, these riddles, they start easy, but boy, do they get hard. Do you guys feel up for some riddles? Yes. Oh, no, thanks. <laughs> well, Marshmole at least is game. Here we go. Riddle number one. I carry within me something quite tall, but it's folded up tiny, for I am pretty small. With a spot that's just right, plus water and light, I'll be a bit of shade for you all. Eyes! Eyes? Good guess. Martian Squirrel, do you have an idea? A tree? Also a good idea, but remember, it starts out very small. Like a seed! A seed, yes! A seed, that is indeed the answer to my riddle. But you still have three more riddles to go, and they get much harder, as I said before. Riddle number two. I come from the back of a bird, but I am certainly not a turd. Yellow is my heart with a lot of white parts. Call me Scramble if I have been stirred. And Martian Mole has it already. It is indeed an egg that is the answer to my second riddle, and I'm happy that you answered it right. Riddle number three comes right on the heels of that. I'm in both the grass and the tree, but I'm not alive. I'm what your eyes see. If you can't Sorry. find me on money. Was that Martian Mouse? Do you have it? Yeah. If you can't find me on money, I'll spell it out for you, honey. Grab rainbow ears every nearly. Oh. This one is pretty hard. Do you want to hear it again without the voice? Yeah. yeah. Wait, Martian Squirrel, Martian, Martian Squirrel's got an idea. Green! The answer is green, correct. We're having trouble hearing you, but you're absolutely correct. Martian Squirrel is right. It is the color green. It's in grass and trees, but it's not alive. It's what your eyes see. Uh, and it's on money. And if you spell it out, G-R-E-E-N, grab rainbow's ears every nearly. Excellent job, Martian Squirrel. Three riddles down, only one left, but it's the most difficult one of all. Very few adventurers have ever answered this one correctly. I'm as round as a quarter, glide straight as a dove. I'll carry stuff for you, you just have to shove. The only time I'm alone is when I'm a juggler's throne. While I'm rolling, they balance above. Martian Squirrel? You. What is it? You. You? Glue? You. He the said you. Uh, I said the boulder. It's a ball bearing? No, the boulder. He oh, said the boulder. boulder. Oh, an excellent idea. You're on the right track. It's shaped like the boulder. Well, except smoother. As round as a quarter. A ball. Also a great idea. You're much closer this time. So it's a ball, but it carries stuff for you. You just have to shove. Basket? You're getting close. Um, a suitcase. A suitcase? What does a suitcase have to help you, uh, like, you know, shove it? Wheels. Wheels! Wait, who said wheels? Who was it? Him. Hey, nicely job, Martian Mole! So, the, the juggler's throne, uh, you know, so like a juggler sits on a unicycle. Eh, it's a bit of a stretch, maybe. <laughs> but yes, the answer to the last, yes, the answer to my last riddle is a wheel. And I'm so glad you've answered it right. I guess you four, you three adventurers are smart enough and brave enough to enter the deep, dark cave. I hope that you can find Baby Sparrow within. Baby, uh, Martian Squirrel, do you have a question? Yeah, if very few ever people on the entire red planet have ever answered the last question, how did Baby Sparrow get in? Baby Sparrow did not, uh, Martian Squirrel wants to know how Baby Sparrow got in if she was not able to answer the, if very few people can answer the riddle. Well, it turns out I sometimes take coffee breaks and I happen to be on one when Baby Sparrow flew into the cavern. I'm very sorry, <laughs> but I was negligent in my duties as guardian of the cave and the Baby the Sparrow got inside. coffee Mars? Wow. <laughs> I don't know how the rock drinks coffee, but uh, uh, he does. <laughs> Okay, 
So you enter into the cave. And it takes a long second for your eyes to adjust. It's very dark inside of the cave. And you can hear cries for help coming from the far end of the cave. And let me ask you, when you enter a dark cave, and the only sound that you can hear is the dripping of stalagmites and a cry for help, how does that make you feel as your character? As your character. Martian. Petrified. Petrified. Petrified? Martian, Mo Martian Mole is petrified. Martian Mouse, how do you feel? Um, brave? Brave. Martian Mouse has no fear, runs headlong into a stalagmite because he's so fearless. Ha 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 But you're fine. It's just a, a surface scratch and it was so dark nobody saw it happen. So uh, you don't even lose any of your pride, you know. <laughs> Martian Squirrel, how do you feel in this situation? I feel even more um, eager to help that poor soul. You feel, okay, you want to help that poor squirrel, uh, poor, poor squirrel, <laughs> yeah, wait, sorry, say that one more time. I want to help the baby sparrows even more. You want to help baby, yes, of course, baby sparrow more. Because imagine, baby sparrow, if she's trapped in the cave, she's in just as much darkness as you guys are. And if you're scared, she must be terrified, petrified, to use Martian Mole's excellent word. Okay, so your eyes slowly adjust to the darkness. And you can begin to see that inside this cavern is a deep chasm. Do you guys know what that word means, chasm? It's like a deep, oh yeah, Martian squirrel, do you have an idea? It's like a giant, it's like two cliffs with like a giant hole. Just exactly, yes, down. it's like, it's a, it's a huge pit. Um, uh, oh yes, yeah, uh, somebody on Facebook, uh, Rebecca is saying it's stalactites, not stalagmites. Uh, tights are from the table or from the floor, mites are from the mound on the... I, I can never remember the difference between them, but uh, it turns out there are both inside of this cavern, and whichever one I said is the one that Martian uh, Mouse ran into, because I'm the one telling the story, so I get to decide. <laughs> the storyteller is never wrong. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, you uh, are feeling very brave and you want to help out this sparrow. Um, yes, so there's a chasm. So a chasm is often cut by water. So like the Grand Canyon, you could call it a chasm. A, a deep, deep pit with steep sides on either side. And you're going to have to cross this deep pit, this chasm, to get to the other side where Baby Sparrow jump, is. Jump! Okay, excellent. Let's go ahead and look at this chasm now. I'm dangerous. Oh. <laughs> now, Martian Mouse, I think your instincts are right. I think you're going to have to jump, but I have to warn you. That, is that water or is that... It spikes. Don't. It's sharp spikes. So you could kill yourself. Risking your life to save a bird? I wouldn't do that. I'd let my friend die. <laughs> well, uh, I think thankfully the adventurers are not quite as uh, callous about the value of bird life. <laughs> Now, I gotta warn you though, so uh, Martian Mouse, this is further than any of you have ever jumped before. This is a truly enormous jump. Martian Squirrel, do you, do you have an idea here? Yeah, um, you know, for a spike, there's just like this going like this, but if you land on like this side of the spike, it won't hurt you. So I'm climbing down and um, stepping on the two sides of the spike, but not the tip. Okay, great idea. So if you were to avoid the spiky part of the spikes, you could make your way, if you climb down one side, to the other side of the chasm. But then you would have to climb up to the top as well. Um, and this Wait, chasm is its deceptively deep here. Uh, it's going to be really hard for you guys to climb up the opposite wall. I think you're I, better I, I off think trying I, to jump. I think I would make the jump. I think I would make the jump. Martian <laughs> Mouse mean, thinks real. that he can make the jump. Do you guys... I, so, I got I to gotta tell you this. Martian, Martian Mole. What's your idea? So, a um, Martian squirrel could like hook his tail around the the edge, like the corner of the cliff thingy, and then he could um, and then he could start swinging with Mouse on him, and then he could like propel Mouse over. Martian Mouse, what do you think about that? Um, this is your th you're risking your tail here. This is your tail that you're risking. Um, and your ears and your all of your mouse body, um, yeah. all of your bones, really, you're risking. So it's up to you how you want to jump across this chasm if you're going to be the one to jump. Do you want to try to do a trapeze artist swing? Sure. 
Or do you want to just get a running start and jump? It's up to you. What do you think is yeah, running, running, start, running, start, and jump. Yeah. running start and jump. All right. Okay, guys. So Martian Mouse is going to take a crack at making this jump. It is an insane jump. This is like Evil Knievel level jumping Snake Canyon. You guys don't know that reference, but it's a cool reference. Look it up sometime. Um, you're going to try to jump across this cavern. Okay. Uh, this chasm, excuse me. Now, to do that, Martian Mouse is a very brave animal, right? But he's still going to need the support of his friends. You guys are going to have to cheer him on. Can you guys make some noise and really build him up here? Martian Mouse! Martian Mouse! Martian Mouse! Martian Mouse! Martian Mouse! All right, let's make some noise! Let's make some noise, Martian Mouse! Martian Mouse! Okay, you run for us. Martian Mouse, give us a run. Can you act out the running and the jumping? Martian Mouse! Martian Mouse! Martian Mouse, you gotta act this out. Come on, run! You gotta run! All right, he's running, he's mad, and he leaps into the air, he flies through the air, he does a triple backflip, he pirouettes through the air, he's got panache coming out of his ears, that's like a flamboyant courage, he twirls the judges who weren't there until this exact second, all hold up their 10 cards, throw them away, hold up their 13 cards, throw them away, hold up the 107 cards. He earned 107 points from each of the 17 judges, it's which I just decided are in this cave with us. He lands ever so gracefully on the lip of the chasm, and then the chasm cracks, and he begins to fall, but wait, he catches himself, and again, he hauls himself over the edge, just like before. He leans over the edge, he gets his weight over, and the chasm cracks again. Ah! <laughs> but the third time, the third time, he makes it to the top of the chasm, and he makes his way to Baby Sparrow. Now, Baby Sparrow is lying in a pile of rocks, and it looks as if her wing is broken. Now, how are you going to get Baby Sparrow back? Digging. Martian Mole, do you have an idea? Martian Mole's sister? Oh, yeah, I'm um, so... One, I'm um, like so. You may be like, muted, actually. Uh, we can't seem to hear. Whirl or mole, go back, <laughs> get the rope, and then. I can't throw hear what you're saying, but I think it's a brilliant and idea. I rope rock across. Yeah. Ah, oh, it looked like a really good idea. I'm sorry, I have no idea. Um, anybody else have an idea? Um, Martian squirrel. Because why don't you like get everybody to jump over, and then uh, you, push, you push the rocks. Just take the rocks. Okay, over. so what you do is you carefully okay. grab the sparrow oh, she and you run back and this time it turns out that the cliff entrance is a little higher on the other side than it is on the bottom so you take a running start and you're able holding the baby sparrow to actually run out mm. and leap across the chasm once again and you make it back to your starting place <clears throat> now you reach the far end of the chasm and you've got the baby sparrow and now you need to say something to the sparrow because the sparrow is very upset the sparrow doesn't know what's going on and you've got to calm the sparrow down. What would you say to a sparrow that would was scared be and had a broken wing and had been in the dark for a would long you get time? Kidnapped? What the heck is wrong with you? Why you came in here? I think, yeah, calming him down that way would be a really good idea. I have to go. It's okay. Uh, should I just, should we just go for it? Guys, we're actually going to go ahead and hold on for one second. We seem to be running into an audio issue where I cannot hear you. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about Baby Sparrow's backstory and see if you can uh, understand where she's coming from. Baby Sparrow loves worms more than anything in the entire world. That's her thing, right? She's got a t-shirt that says, I love worms. And the funny thing about that shirt is it's actually a band t-shirt because the band, the worms, is her favorite music. She loves worms that sing, she loves worms that fly, blue worms, red worms, yellow worms, they all are just delicious and gravy to her. But one day, she you. found a worm that like was at the bottom probably. of a drainage ditch. And whenever we she followed that worm, she saw another we one that was deeper into you. the ditch. And she entered into one of those big pipes that are used for like draining sewers and stuff. And very quickly, following these worms, she got very lost in the darkness and very scared. Baby Sparrow has always been terrified of the darkness ever since. So it was very brave of her to fly into the cavern like that to go and try to find the worms. Oh, do you want to come unbrave? Hey, can one of you guys say something? Huh? I don't think it's working. 
Look at you. Huh. Oh, uh, and Brent is saying on YouTube that they can't hear you. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, okay, uh, let's, we can do it through charades. I'll start drawing. Oh, no. We can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Can you wave your hands if you hear me? Okay, we just can't hear you. So we are actually going to have to kind of charades it up right now. Um, can you guys show me what you would do to how you would, your gestures that you would use to comfort a baby sparrow? You know, how would you hold the baby sparrow and rock the baby sparrow? <laughs> oh, that's a little aggressive there, Martian Mouse's brother, I think. But yeah, uh, Martian Mouse, uh, yeah, well, can you describe for me? I can't actually hear what you're saying, but I can see what you're doing. Okay, you're going to like gently hold it with your hand, pick it up. And yeah, you carry it with one hand. And you carry it outside to the uh, outside of the. Um... I put it in my pocket. Okay. It'll work. Okay. I can hear all of you. Sorry about this technical difficulties here. I, I don't think it's loading. Uh... Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, so, um, how about, let's just go to the outside of the cavern now. Okay, so you have successfully comforted Baby Sparrow through these gestures that I can only see somewhat. Um, yeah, and Kelsey, can you move that audio meter? I can't see any of the kids. Um, I can't see the one kid. Um, okay, so you get the Sparrow outside, and outside, very fortunately, uh, Martian Rock has uh, still been rolled away from the entrance. He's not there anymore. Uh, he's, I guess, on another coffee break or something. <laughs> And outside, um, you're able to reemerge into the sunlight once again. And you discover that uh, waiting for you is Papa Sparrow. And Papa Sparrow says, oh my heavens, you did it! You rescued my baby! Baby Sparrow is saved! And I'm so very happy that you've done it! How did you do it? I don't understand! Oh, so, no. um... Up when next, to, to celebrate the ending of our little tale, tale, we'll actually be doing uh, a little bit of another disco party. <laughs> because, I don't know if you know this, but uh, based on the switch in Baby Sparrow's apartment, she's really into disco music, and it turns out that Papa Sparrow is as well. And so, Papa Sparrow, he gets you all as a reward for saving his daughter. Uh, he gets you a beautiful disco ball. And now, the three of you, gathered outside the cave entrance with Martian Rock right there, decide to have another disco party once again. And so, you begin to play the music, and the sound swells up into the air, and we go ahead and see the two sparrows. And you play the music. <laughs> Got enough of this disco therapy. I said, And that is the end of the Martian explorations for today. We had Martian Mole, we had Martian Squirrel, we had Martian Mouse. They solved the mysteries. Clayton, Joshua, Aslan, you guys were incredible. Your inventiveness, your solution making, your commitment to righting the wrongs of the Martian planet. You've made the world a better place. The Martian world, a better place. Thank you guys so much for participating. If you are watching at home, if you are part of uh, ECS, uh, or if you're just on YouTube or Facebook and you're watching, please, if you want to find out more about us, go to Dr. Sparks Show. Every single day at 4 p.m., we do a live stream where I use my typewriter, one of these ones back here, to write stories with kids in a collaborative way. And we actually have a spot open today at 4 p.m. if you're interested in writing some typewriter stories with me. If you leave a comment on the Facebook or uh, YouTube channel, uh, I'll reach out and we can schedule that for later today. I'm Dr. Sparks. This is Martian Explorations. Thank you guys so much for participating today. This was incredible. And until next time, make sure that you keep your planets red and your mysteries solved.